Want to know what Europe does for you? Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcast on security and defence. The past decade has seen the emergence of new security threats and growing uncertainty about the reliability of some of Europe's traditional allies. In the face of this new, unstable security environment, the EU has embarked on a general scaling up of its security and defence capabilities. But will it suffice? Stay with us. For some analysts, global instability has become the new normal, where disorder and tension have gradually replaced two decades of relative stability across the world. But since 2012, conflicts have been on the rise. Syria, Iraq, the Middle East, Yemen, the Sahel, and the number of civil wars and attacks perpetrated by both states and armed groups increased for the first time in a decade. And to all this, we need to add the threat of violent extremism, terrorism, cybersecurity and hybrid threats, which have grown to constitute some of the new risks to security and peace in the world. Against this background, what is the EU doing? As a consequence of this challenging security environment, the US, China, Russia, India and Saudi Arabia have been arming themselves. But defence spending in the EU had been falling for almost a decade and only began to rise again for the first time in 2014, if only by a modest 2.3%. But the need for a stronger and more capable EU has finally made its way onto the EU's agenda and progress towards a Europe of defence has become a critical part of a wider vision for a strong and more effective EU foreign policy aiming at the promotion of prosperity, democracy, peace and security in the world. It was in this context that in 2016 the EU presented its global strategy for a foreign and security policy, which was, among other things, a call for more investment and more cooperation between EU member states on defence issues. The idea that the European Union should deliver more in the area of security and defence has also become more and more popular among EU citizens, with almost 7 in 10 of them supporting greater EU intervention in this field. But how does the EU cooperation in this field work? Stay with us. While security and defence policy in the EU lies predominantly in the hands of member states, and it is no secret that cooperation among EU member states in this field has always been a complicated issue. Even if the foundations for such cooperation were already laid down in the early 1990s, and the idea of a common security and defence policy, which could lead progressively to a European defence union, is enshrined in the Lisbon Treaty. This treaty, signed in 2007, introduced some important changes, notably a mutual defence clause requiring all EU countries to help a member state under attack, but also a solidarity clause to support a member state affected by a human or natural catastrophe or by a terrorist attack. The treaty also contemplated the possibility of a permanent structured cooperation, open to all member states willing and able to commit themselves to taking part in European military equipment programmes and to providing combat units available for immediate action. Despite many reforms, progress in this field remains slow and keeps on stumbling in the face of member states' sovereignty claims, but things have started to change. While security and defence matters remain the responsibility of member states, an increasing number of initiatives aimed at strengthening EU cooperation in this area have come to fruition since the launch of the EU Global Strategy in June 2016. Let's examine some of them in greater detail. In the 2016 European Defence Action Plan, which aims at boosting Europe's defence industrial base to be able to meet current and future security needs, the Commission proposed a dedicated European Defence Fund to be included within the future EU budget. In 2017, the EU established a military planning and conduct capability to command EU military missions and launched the permanent structured cooperation that had been sketched out in Lisbon 10 years before. The EU has also launched a voluntary, member-state-driven process of monitoring the defence plans of EU countries to help coordinate spending and identify opportunities to collaborate. It's also working to improve military mobility within and across the EU, as well as to support research in the field of defence. The EU has also strengthened its cooperation with NATO and is busy boosting the EU's capacity to deploy civilian crisis management missions. Some of the objectives of these missions are to reinforce the police, the rule of law and the civil administration in fragile and conflict hit settings. So what more can the EU do in the future? Well, the debate on the future of EU security and defence policy is a complex one, with future scenarios that range from keeping the status quo to the progressive framing of a common union defence policy. However, there seems to be widespread consensus on the fact that the instability and unpredictability of the global security environment requires a common response from the EU and its member states. So I think it's safe to assume that in the coming years, the funding opportunities within the European Defence Fund will be used to the full. 
We can also expect more cooperation in the areas of collaborative investment, capability development and operational readiness, as well as a stronger and perhaps more independent EU role in civilian crisis management. And finally, we can be pretty sure that the European Parliament will continue pushing for more and better coordination of national actions and resources in security and defence. You're listening to European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. 